Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Um, we're going to read the whole chapter. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. And the sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. And no lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying in mid-air, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. The second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on the forehead or on the hand, he too will drink of the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. He will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image and for anyone who receives the mark of his name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commandments and remain faithful to Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he that was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of the fire came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the earth gathered its grapes and threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. They were trampled in the winepress outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses' bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. This is the word of the Lord. Well, we're still in the middle of the series the future has already begun and this is uh, sermon number 11 and we're going to take a break from the series uh, after this sunday 
So we're going to prepare for Christmas and next week, uh, Hoop and then Elmer, they will focus on, uh, on passion narratives. Uh, and then after Easter, we will continue our studies on the series, The Future Has Already Begun. But this morning, Revelation chapter 14. And there is a message, I think a very timely message for this morning from this passage. But before I go to the actual uh, message to inspire you, I would like to go through the chapter and just comment briefly on a couple of verses. Now, the first verse, then I looked and there before me was the Lamb. It's highlighted yellow, if you can see it on the screen, the lamb. But the lamb is, is suddenly after all the, what we read in the previous chapter with the dragon and the two beasts. And now there is the lamb. What a contrast between chapter 13 and chapter 14. And we read that the lamb is standing on Mount Zion. Mount Zion, that's the place where God has revealed himself and God meets people there in the temple on the altar. Mount Zion is so often mentioned in the Old Testament as the mount from where deliverance may be expected. Uh, or take uh, Psalm chapter 2, uh, verse 6, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill, or Joel Chapter 2, verse 33, um, redemption will come for all those who flee to Mount Zion. And here in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1, it's the Lamb standing on Mount Zion. And with him we read the 144,000. And the 144,000, we already uh, read about the 144,000 in chapter 7. And uh, the interpretation that we are following in these series is interpretation um, making it very relevant for today. And 144,000 is not the number, of, is not the elite, as sometimes some sects have said throughout history. We are part of the 144,000, and they got into trouble as soon as they passed the number of 144,000. No, 144,000, it's 12 times 12 times 1,000. And it communicates that all are there. No one is missing. Of every tribe, everybody who belongs to the land, nobody is missing. And there they are together with the land. And the 144,000, we also read that, he, that they had his name, and his father's name written on their foreheads. Wow. Wow. So if you belong to Jesus, the name of Jesus and the Lamb is written on your forehead, and the name of the Father, you belong to him. We'll come back to that in just a moment. But let us continue to read in verse chapter, uh, chapter 14, verse 2. Um, John heard this sound from heaven, and he cannot describe it exactly. But first of all, he says, it was like the roar of rushing waters, referring obviously to chapter one, when John, uh, in, um, for the first time in the vision, heard the sound from heaven and heard the Son of Man, heard Jesus, and the sound was like a rushing the roar of rushing waters. But that was not all. It's also like a loud peal of thunder. And that reminds everybody who knows its Old Testament of Exodus chapter 19 and chapter 20, the revelation of God at Sinai. And his voice was like the, a loud peal of thunder. God is speaking. And thirdly, the, sa the sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. Well, we know of David and um, playing the harp and, and inviting the Spirit of God to, to ease the mind of Saul. So everybody who 
sees this vision or hears about the vision is now prepared for the word of the Lord. Because there is the lamb and there is the sound that's preparing us. All right, God is going to speak. Are we ready? Are you ready? Are we ready together? Then in verse 3, the first thing is not the word of the Lord, but it's a time of worship. Wow. So if we go to God, the first thing we should do and the first thing that we hear is a worship. Worship song. They sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000. And the message is that there is a, a, an, an intimacy between the Lamb and the saints, those who belong to him and to the Father. This is a song that's not there uh, spread out in the world and everybody can make his own version. No, this is a song within the Christian family. God the Father, and thanks to the Son, and we all belong to that family. And we read in verse 4 and 5 a little bit more about the 144,000, uh, about the saints, about everybody who belongs to Jesus. And there's a little bit, I like to say a little bit more about, for instance, the uh, the fact that they did not defile themselves with women. Uh, you may ask, oh, what does this mean? Um, is, is sexual intercourse not permitted? Obviously, that's not the meaning. But there again, you need to know your Old Testament because this is exactly what was uh, told to the people of Israel in Exodus chapter 19. When Moses went to the mountain, everybody had to restrain from um, having uh, fun together, uh, making love together, uh, but focus on the Lord. This is now the time not to think about each other and, and socialize. It is important, but now is the time to listen to the Lord. So these are all ready to come into the presence of the Lord. And they follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. And no lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. I'd just like to go to the next passage, the passage of the three angels, in the verses 6 to 11. The first angel, uh, verse 6 and 7, is proclaiming the gospel. And the literal translation of the word gospel is good news. So is he proclaiming good news? And we know the good news. And you can read the good news in verse 6 and verse 7. It, the good news is there is still time. Repent. Fear God. He wants to save you. Are you ready? There is still time. There is good news. You don't have to fear judgment because the Lamb has taken all our, the judgment that was upon us. So that's the good news. The first angel at the right at the end, just before the judgment, there is still a last chance. Then the second angel comes and announces the fall of Babylon. I'm going to read about that in um, a couple of chapters later on. And then the third angel in the verses 9 to 11 announcing judgment. Yes, the wrath of God against all unrighteousness, against all who do not seek peace, do not want to be reconciled with God, who do not respond to the call. Repent, please, please. God loves the world. He does not want anyone to be um, to be lost. But all those who say, I do want to be lost. Yes, there is judgment. And then these two verses, 12 and 13, it calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. We had exactly the same call for patient endurance in the preceding chapter, in verse, in, um, in chapter 13. We were also 
called to be patient. Yes, um, it's a hard time, the time of judgment, and the time of judgment, when has it, when will it start? Well, it has started already. The judgment is already upon the world. Uh, I'll come back to that in just a moment. But those who belong to Jesus do not need to fear, but are called to be patient and to endure whatever is happening because God is in control. And then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. So to die when you belong to Jesus is <coughs> blessed. As Paul said, I don't know what I need to choose, to go to the Lord, to, to stay here. It's better to go to the Lord. No, it's better now for your sake to stay, to remain here. But you are blessed even if you die, because you belong to the Lord. And, and they will rest from their labor. The, the word rest reminds of just the preceding verse, that there is no rest for those who have the mark of the beast. There's no rest, no rest. But for those who have the name of Jesus and the name of the Father, there is rest. Hallelujah. There is rest for them. Even when they die, they will rest for their deeds. Now, just briefly, the last uh, verses, 14 to, down to 20. We first have the Son of Man harvesting his fruit. And it's all the wheat, so the, the reference um, is here that... He is gathering in all his saints, all those who belong to the Lamb. And then, verses 17 to 20, then the angel is harvesting the rest, the, 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 the grapes. And, and there is God's wrath. And it's all those who do not uh, want to be saved, all those who refuse to ask forgiveness and receive redemption. Yes, there is another harvest there. Well, what is the message of this for this morning? The message of this morning, I think, is very timely. Um, a day where there is a lot of anxiety, uh, a lot of concerns and worries. And people are afraid. Um, a lot of things are happening in this world. There's the climate change. Um, there is a, a crisis with refugees. Um, terrible things are happening in refugee camps down in southern Europe. Uh, there is still war. Uh, there's a lot of illness. And now there's the coronavirus having enormous impact um, on, on daily life. Schools are closing down. Probably there are schools here in the Netherlands as well are going to close down. We'll hear about that more later on today from the Dutch government. But already, uh, even before the, the primary schools closed down, uh, uh, a lot of things have uh, changed and uh, with enormous economic consequences. So what's happening here? And I think the message from this morning is that all those who belong to Jesus are secured by the Lamb, are secured in the Lamb. Because the name of the Lamb and of the Father are written on their foreheads. Never forget that you belong to him. You are secured by the Lamb, in the Lamb. And there are a couple of verses that I'd like to share with you three verses from Scripture that um, confirm this message from Revelation chapter 14. The first one is in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 39, when Jesus says, This is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. 
So this is the will of the Father, that Jesus will not lose anybody. So there's a great emphasis on all will be saved. 144,000, everybody, no one will be missing. And it's the commandment of the Father to the Son. So the Son is going to take care of this. Another verse, also in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 28. Jesus says, I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. And these are just two examples in the Gospels. There are more examples of words of Jesus. that They're given to me and I will keep them secure. And even when there is temptation, for instance, in Luke chapter 22, um, uh, with, with Peter, and then Jesus saying, ah, the, the Satan is trying to, to tempt you, but I have prayed for you. And I will meet you at Galilee. That's what he said before Jesus was condemned and crucified. So Jesus, a, a, a great example again, that Jesus will take care of you, that you will not be snatched away. And lastly, a great verse from Paul, the letter of Paul to Colossians, chapter 3, verse 3. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Your life is now hidden, kept secure with Christ in God. Patient endurance. That's what we are called to do. Yes, if you are concerned, if you are afraid at times, that's normal. We're human beings. There's nothing wrong about being afraid of what is going to happen tomorrow. Will I um, be infected by the coronavirus? There's nothing unspiritual being afraid about things like that. But God has given us to support each other, to pray for each other, to help us in such a way that we will not be um, paralyzed by fear, that we will not be guided by fear, but that again and again we support each other to go to Jesus and start worshiping him and say, all right, let's not forget your name is written in heaven and apart from that, his name is written on your forehead. You belong to him and he will take care of you. So we need to support each other and pray for each other. And the patient endurance. Uh, just want to read, I've, I've, I've referred to this uh, verse in Romans chapter 5 already um, a few sermons ago in, from, in this series. But I'd like to read it again. Romans chapter 5 verse 3 to 5. We also glorify in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So this is also a time in which there is an opportunity to grow spiritually. It's not an easy time. We need each other. You cannot um, be a faithful Christian on your own. We need the support of each other. Maybe it's time to just do a little bit more telephoning instead of just uh, texting, because we cannot meet each other so often as we would like to meet. But let us... <laughs> Also see this as an opportunity to grow spiritually, to depend on God, to let our hope in him uh, grow. And in that way, in, with that attitude, uh, be in the world, serve this needy world, the people who, who are so afraid, 
we may share about our faith. And together with non-believers, we may uh, invest in looking for solutions and, uh, and support each other. Uh, we're together in this. But one thing, those who belong to Jesus, they are secured in the Lamb and by the Lamb. Amen. Let's just have a moment of silence and we'll close just a minute of silence with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that the hope that has been poured into our hearts will be confirmed by you, not just in the future, but now already through the Holy Spirit. You confirm that the hope in Jesus Christ is real. I pray especially now for everyone here in IBC Eindhoven, joined through the internet with each other, that you will touch the hearts of those who lack hope, who are afraid, who are worrying and find it very difficult to, to find rest in Christ. Lord, you do this miracle through your Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that confirms the hope, the hope that is in Christ Jesus. Lord, help us to be alert to promptings of the Spirit that maybe your Spirit will prompt us to call somebody or to visit somebody if it's possible to visit or to just send a text message so that we will increase our ministry of encouragement because that's what you call us to do encourage each other to focus on the lamb of him who wrote his name upon our foreheads and the name of his son. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. And yes, we pray for this world, your world, the world that you love. We pray, dear Lord, that you will help the medical science to find a treatment and a vaccine for and against the coronavirus. But we pray especially for the medical personnel in all the hospitals and, and those who visit homes. Um, they are very vulnerable because they, they choose to serve those who are sick and ill. And we pray for special protection for them here in the Netherlands, but not just in the Netherlands, everywhere in our home countries. We pray for our sister to see you. Thank you, Father, that she, you are with her. Uh, far away in the Far East, but you are with her. And you are with all of us, uh, close and far away. And thank you, dear Lord, for your encouraging word through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.